I couldn't get a job in the UK until I did this. It's so important to look at your CV with critical eyes. When you are looking at your CV, be sure to also send it to recruiters and ask them for feedback. What works well in my CV? What should I do differently in order to make my CV better? Now, I received a great deal of feedback from various recruiters and this helped me create a better CV. Because honestly, it's expensive to actually get someone to look at your CV and then pay them for assessing your CV. But when you get recruiters to help you, you are not having to pay a fee and they have the knowledge to understand what makes up a good CV. So definitely don't be afraid to engage with recruiters and ask them, is this CV strong? Will this CV work? I would advise that in your CV, you don't just list the things that you've done, but instead write it as achievements. For example, if you're into sales and in your previous company, you increased their sales by 30%, then write down, I increased the sales by 30% by doing the following things. If you receive certain awards, have that written down. People that are assessing your CV and assessing your capabilities want to understand your achievements and what you can bring to the next role. If you're applying from your home country and you haven't yet arrived in the UK, you can definitely apply from your home country before coming to the UK. I would have actually advised that you do so because at least you've made that interaction with potential recruiters and recruiters will even interview you in your home country. They may call you or they may have a Skype call or they will just email you to find out more information so that you don't leave everything to the time that you get to the UK. You actually have prepared yourself. You can even line up interviews in person, you know, so you have that understanding that I'm coming to the UK, but I'm not starting from scratch. I've already put some work in into my interview process so that when I land in the UK, I'm not going to be so stressed out because I have some leads when it comes to potential work offers okay so do apply from your home country before coming to the uk use linkedin create an account on linkedin and apply for jobs on linkedin have a professional photo and make sure that your previous work experience is updated on linkedin now recruiters are looking for people on linkedin and companies are also looking for candidates on linkedin so LinkedIn is a wonderful platform. So make sure that you register on LinkedIn and you can also make sure that you register for the job alerts, notifications, sign up for those. And that's really helpful because once again, you could be one of the first applicants. So for example, if you want to work for British Airways, then you can go to their profile on LinkedIn and look and see if they have any vacancies. And if their vacancies align to what you actually want, then you can apply for that position. So LinkedIn is a really powerful tool. Be sure to have yourself really visible on LinkedIn. Be sure to engage with as many recruitment companies as possible. Sign up to those various recruitment companies so that you can also receive job alerts from them and this will come to your email. So if, for example, you're into finance, then you would really look at finance recruitment companies, financial recruitment companies, because they will be interested in placing you as a finance officer or an accountant, etc. So make sure that you really are aligned to as many recruitment agencies as possible. And don't think, oh, okay, I've contacted 10 recruitment agencies and that's enough. No, you know, when I hear that people have said, oh, I can't get a job, I applied for 10 jobs today and nothing is happening. 
you've only applied for 10 jobs. When you are searching for a job, you have to apply for hundreds of jobs a day. It really is a numbers game. The more jobs you apply for, the more likely you will get that job. So really apply and register to as many recruitment companies as possible. And when you engage with the recruiter, don't just think, okay, I found a recruiter today and then three months later you have no contact with that recruiter. No, you have to follow up because there are so many candidates and recruiters have to contact so many candidates that they may forget about you. So let recruiters remember you by having regular contact with your recruiter so that when a job is available, they'll think of you first before they think of any other candidate. As I said, register to a number of recruitment agencies. Similarly, you should also register to as many websites that have job vacancies on them, such as Read, Monster, Indeed, CV Library. Because, for example, Read is so amazing. You know, you register, you see all the different jobs that are available, you then can specify, okay, I want a job in London. So you put the location, you sort it by your location. You want a certain salary. You can even categorize those job alerts based on that particular salary. And you can apply to as many jobs as you wish within those categories. So also when you sign up and you sign up for the job alert notifications via these various different companies, you will be one of the first applicants because you've seen it really soon, so you can quickly apply for that job. And don't be disheartened. You may think, oh, well, now I've applied for all these jobs, numerous jobs, and nothing's happening. Why isn't it happening for me? You may think it's specifically only happening to you. But no, sometimes things do take time. I would say if your finances are running low and you still haven't landed that job in your specific profession, then it's okay to take a job that's not necessarily in your profession or doesn't pay as much as you would want. Just so that your finances aren't completely depleted, you will still be looking for a job while you have the other job and you can take some days off when you have interviews, etc. And then before you know it, you will land the job that you really want and you would have not completely depleted all your funds because remember it is really expensive to live in the UK and even though you may be coming with savings those savings can soon be spent if you don't have an income. So your CV has been checked by a recruiter, you've received feedback, you've updated your CV, you've channeled your CV and sent it via LinkedIn and through the different job portals like Read, etc., and through the recruitment agencies, and you've landed yourself a job interview. Fantastic news! Well done to you! I know that it's hard work, but you are getting there. Look at the job description thoroughly, scrutinize every single sentence in that job description. And for example, if you are applying for a role of a journalist and they say proven experience of writing press articles, then have your portfolio ready. If you've written a number of press releases, bring that to the interview. In fact, in any kind of field, be it finance, be it HR, if you have a portfolio, if you have proof to show that you've done similar roles and this is what you've achieved. Show the recruiter, show the company what you've actually brought, what you've actually done. It's surprising that many people have done the work but they don't show it in the interview. It's really impressive to see what somebody has actually done that is just not written in their CV but now they can show the magazine that they proofread. They can show the photos that they took if they're applying for a job as a photographer. So really have your portfolio and make sure that that is updated as well. So in terms of the job description, 
I have been an interviewee. I've interviewed at various places, but I've also interviewed people. And I'm very surprised when people aren't really prepared, meaning that they haven't researched the company that much. So make sure that you really research the company really well. Look at their website, look at their social media pages. Think about the questions that you would like to ask the interviewer. I actually write down pages of information in a book and when somebody is interviewing me, I actually refer to those notes and they can see that I've written many pages of information so that they know I've time out to research the company really well because I am really passionate about this company and I really would be a good candidate because if I've put in so much work even prior to the interview, then imagine how proactive I'd be in the job itself. So do the same, research the company, have your notes at the interview, show them that you're referring to your notes, say to them in the interview, I'm so excited about this role, I spent five days researching this role just because I think that I'm so suited to this role because of A, B, C, D. So show your enthusiasm for the role. It doesn't have to be over the top, but by showing that you've prepared so well, it's an indicator that this candidate will go the extra mile. And that's what people are looking for. They're looking at somebody who doesn't need to, you, they don't have to hold your hand through every single part of the job, but that you are a proactive individual who takes the initiative to make things happen. Oh boy, when I got to the UK, I was told by a recruiter that it would be very difficult for me to get a job because I didn't have UK work experience. And they then told me about contracting. Now, I had never heard of contracting before. And at first I was hesitant, but then I thought, if this is going to help me get work experience, then yes, I'm definitely going to try contracting. And I did, and it was a game changer. So if you are only interested in permanent roles, Consider contracting because contracting is amazing. You are able to work for various companies. For example, you have a six week contract that ends. Your recruiter just sets you up with another contract. You apply for that role, you get in, and then you learn skills at the next company. And contracting taught me to adapt, to get into a role, assess what's needed, and work systematically and quickly to achieving those those targets because the role is much shorter and you expect to do things in a shorter time frame. Contracting also pays well and for me it made me more confident because I knew that as soon as I got to a job I would then assess what's needed from me and what did I need to actually do to reach those goals. So I would be very proactive in understanding the company, what challenges they were facing, and how I was going to help them reach certain objectives. And honestly, if you told me that I would be doing contracting, I would have been, I would have thought, oh, I know nothing about this, how can I get into it? But, but the more you contract, the easier it becomes. So don't only think I want a permanent job, try contracting roles as well. Now the beauty of the UK is that they often have jobs that are certain days of the week. You could have a job that is only Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You have Thursday and Friday off. You could have jobs that are till 12 o'clock and then you have the rest of the afternoon off. So depending on your schedule, if you cannot commit to a Monday to Friday job, then there are other options for you. So look into those other options if that's what you need. Now salaries, please know that salaries differ. So for example, if you're living in London, your salary is going to be higher than if you're living in Wales, for example. So note that salaries differ in various parts of the UK. So companies will ask you for references. So have at least two great references and make sure that your references are, are aware that people would be contacting them. And I actually have written references ready and I would normally send them to recruiters so that they know, okay, this is a good candidate because somebody else has also endorsed 
what she's done. You say, well, I have no work experience at all because I've just finished my university degree. I studied human resources and I don't have any work experience. What do I do? Well, in your home country or even in the UK, if you're already in the UK, you can have volunteer experience. So get work experience. You may not get paid and volunteer so that you can put down that experience. For example, you could be an HR assistant at a company and that you volunteered at that specific role so that you actually have something on your CV and you can write down the achievements by volunteering. You learned this, 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 and that. You uh, became familiar with these processes. So you can still have experience on your CV without actually being employed by someone. So importantly, if you are living outside of London, for example, if you are living in a place called Kent and you have to take the train to get to London from Monday to Friday, and it's really expensive to get that train, and you aren't left with much money at the end of the month from your salary because you've now spent so much on your train, then wait up and see if it's actually better for you to get a job closer by in Kent itself where you don't have to take a train Monday to Friday. So even though your salary is more in London, because of various costs like trains, etc., you may be better off just getting a local job in Kent. But really wait up, look at the different scenarios, see where you can actually get more money at the end of the month. In the UK, there are still jobs that offer remote working, which is fantastic. So if you can negotiate remote working, do so, then you won't have to necessarily pay for the train fares. So if you can work from home, say, one day of the week, then you won't, won't be paying for a train on that specific day. Um, and also, remember to be kind to yourself. You are now in a new country. You are trying to apply for a job. You are going for various interviews. It's a stressful process, so be patient. Understand that it's a journey, step by step, and you will get there. Best of luck to you. I'm rooting for you, and I hope that all goes well.